It looks as though I might need to take a crash course in uh, operating a video camera again. It's been such a long time since I last picked up one and recorded anything of merit. I'd like to begin by apologizing for the lack of any new content whatsoever on this channel, but life has sort of gotten in the way, so to speak, and has prevented me in many ways from picking up a camcorder and just recording videos uh, in a fashion and um, matter of frequency as I once was able to, but I hope to change that in these coming months uh, with this video, which I know won't be all that interesting to many people, but it's a video and nonetheless and one that at least proves that I'm still around and have intentions of at least making a video every now and again. This is a Panasonic alarm clock I picked up several months ago when uh, my previous alarm clock decided to uh, cease functioning entirely. Well, at least in a manner of speaking, it was still displaying the correct time, but a very crucial function for something to be considered an alarm clock, its alarm stopped working. The buzzer didn't work, and setting it to wait to the radio also failed to work correctly. And phones are going off in the background. I picked up a camcorder. Can't you tell? It's just like the old days. So this is the Panasonic AM-FM two-band electronic clock radio with a two-year limited warranty. I wonder how long ago that thing expired. This is the model number RC-6050 and certainly much, uh, no doubt much cheaper in design and, and quality than that older mechanical flip clock radio I reviewed many moons ago. With it now connected to power, we do have some signs of life on the display. Now it's rather dim, but this clock radio has a feature that uh, is usually not thought about very much in uh, those low-end, low-budget alarm clocks you can pick up at the local five and dime in Walmart. And that is a dimmer setting for the display, alternating between low and high modes of brightness. And the high is, well, still noticeably dim, but it's actually a nice welcome change from most alarm clocks that blind you with light, even on its lowest uh, brightness setting. So good for sensitive sleepers, not so good for people that have trouble seeing uh, very faint displays. And a very basic alarm clock, no doubt. There's a button whose functionality is described as doze. I'm not really sure why Panasonic saw it fit to call it that and not just sleep, but uh, suffice it to say that it's just a snooze button with a fancy name. Uh, sleep function two sides, to get a medium, two topping pizza, and two probably sides for the best idea to put on our minute settings for adjusting the time. And that's done very easily simply by alternating the switch between time or alarm. Putting it to lock prevents you from making any unintentional changes to the time or alarm setting. And then a switch for changing to wake to either your radio and buzzer or the radio. Really is no way to wake just exclusively to the buzzer unless you were to turn the volume down for the radio, which is done so through this knob. And then a band selector switch over here on the right. There's a tuner knob on the right, which is plastic. does feel quite uh, flimsy, but... And that's to be expected with something this cheap and of course uh, there is the tuning indicator for AM and FM that it is actually in uh, calibration somewhat so you can actually get an accurate depiction of which frequency you are tuned to and really not all that much to discuss or disclose on this radio just uh, what looks to be a two inch speaker which really does let you down in the audio department You'll no doubt hear that once I go and get around to performing some very rudimentary audio tests. And it looks like this plastic bezel is actually coming loose. Sounds like this thing has fallen at one time or another. There's like plastic rattling around on the inside. Well, it seem I misspoke earlier when I said that the dial was in somewhat uh, acceptable calibration because it's tuned to what should be at least 104 megahertz, and I'm actually listening to 105.9 right now, which is the classical station. So, not totally accurate, but close enough. AM actually sounds fairly acceptable using just the built-in speaker, which is your only option for listening, as there's no headphone jack or anything of that nature on this radio. But be, due to the inherent lack of treble with AM broadcasts, actually makes up for the very treble happy speaker. Ends up sounding more balanced. 
well as caps and veneers. Try PowerSwab's risk-free by calling 1-800-204-1201. That's 1-800- It's going up. For the yeah. only was swinging a bat on. Otro, pero... So treasuries have gotten very cheap to the expected Fed funds rate, and so has LIBOR. And they've not quite moved one for one, but they've moved almost in tandem. And as that's occurred, I think you can... So just shut the radio, you can just turn the radio on and off, manual operation just by flipping the switch up and turning it to the down position for off. Overall an alarm clock that's very simple in operation and does work relatively well. I'm considering replacing that Sony analog clock radio that I have with this thing but the audio quality really is somewhat unacceptable in my opinion even if it's only going to be used once a day to wake me from my slumber. Plastic, fairly cheap, but that's what you can come to expect from a radio that uh, heralds from probably uh, sometime in the early to mid 1990s. Again, this is the Panasonic RC-6050 AM and FM two-band electronic clock radio. Thank you for watching.